Hi, so in this video, I will talk about the expectation of a log normal random variable and I will prove that the expectation of the log normal random variable y equals to e to the power of mu plus one half times sigma squared. So suppose we have a random variable y which equals to e to the power of x where x is a normally distributed random variable with mean mu and variance sigma squared and we're interested in the expectation of y. And we know that the expectation of x is equal to its mean mu. But y here is log normally distributed. So that is because y equals e to the power of x. And if we take the natural log of y, that will be the natural log of e to the power of x and that just equals x. So the natural log of y is normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared. So we know e of x, expectation of x is mu, but here we're interested in expectation of y. So we're interested in expectation of e to the power of x. Since x is uh, normally distributed, we know a lot about x because of uh, the properties of a normally distributed random variable. So we know the mean of x is mu, the variance of x is sigma squared, and we also know the probability density function, the PDF of x. And that equals to this expression here. So, since we're interested in the expectation of y, and that equals to expectation of e to the power of x, that means we want to compute expectation of a function of x. We can name that g of x, where g of x equals to e to the power of x. And we know that if we know the PDF of x, which is this expression here, and we know g of x equals e to the power x, the expectation of g of x equals the integral from negative infinity to infinity of g of x times f of x over x, where f of x is the probability density function of x. So the expectation of y, y is g of x, it's a function of x, equals to this expression here. This is our g of x, and this is our f of x, the probability density function of a normally distributed random variable with mean mu and variance sigma squared. So to calculate the expectation of y, we need to compute this whole integral. So we have some complicated terms inside our integral. And first to make it simpler, let's assume that mu equals to zero. So this expression would simplify. So we got rid of the mu. Okay, so let's look. We have two terms here with e to the power of something. So let's combine those terms. Since we're multiplying, that means we have to add the exponents. So that equals to e to the power of x plus minus x squared over two sigma squared. And that is how we get this term here. And let's bring the exponent to have the same denominator. So this, the exponent here would be two times sigma squared times x over two sigma squared plus minus x squared over two sigma squared. And that is our exponent here. Okay, so let's look at this expression and think of what we can do with it. First, let's rearrange the terms. And let's take out the minus sign outside. So that would be minus x squared minus two x sigma squared. And that is all over two sigma squared. Well, think about the familiar expression a squared minus two a b plus b squared equals a minus b squared. 
Well, this expression here looks similar. I mean, here we have x squared, so we could say that a equals x. Here we have minus 2x times sigma squared, so a is x, and then we need times b, so our b would be sigma squared, and then we need this term here plus b squared, so b squared would be sigma squared squared, so that will be sigma to the power of 4. So let's rewrite that expression. Adding an extra term. Well, since we didn't originally have the sigma to the power of 4, here it has a minus sign, we need to add it back. And the denominator stayed the same. Again, we're doing this because we want to rewrite this term so that it would be in the form of a minus b squared. So that's why we added this extra term here. And here we have to add it back because here it has a minus sign when we open the brackets. So as I said, this was our a minus 2ab plus b squared, and we know that equals to a minus b squared. So our a is x and our b is sigma squared. And this is, we're adding back the extra term that we inserted here. So that's how we got this expression. And you'll see why we're doing that. So now we have two terms in our exponent, and the second term does not depend on x. So since we're adding here the exponents, that means we're multiplying the variables. So this equals to e to the power minus. And this is the second term, just putting it here separately. simplifying that term, dividing by sigma squared, we just get sigma squared over 2, and since this is the addition of exponents, that means we're multiplying the variables. So this variable here does not depend on x, and our integral is over x. So this term is a constant, and therefore here we can take it outside of the integral, since it's a multiplier, and we're left with this term here that does depend on x. So let's look at this expression here. Well, this looks familiar. I mean, we just stated previously that this is actually the probability density function because probability density function for a normal random variable equals to this expression. So it's really the same as the term that we have inside the integral, except here we have sigma square instead of mu. But mu is just a mean and it could be anything, so mu could be equal to sigma squared. Sigma squared is just a number. So the term inside the integral is just the f of x, the probability density function for x, where x is normally distributed with mean sigma squared and variance sigma squared. So that's why our integral is just the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x over x, and this is our multiplier outside of the integral. Well, from the definition of a probability density function, we know that if we sum over the whole range of x, the sum of all probabilities must equal to 1, and here we're summing from negative infinity to infinity, so that's over the whole range of x, therefore the whole integral equals 1. So therefore our expression just simplifies to this, to e to the power of 1 half sigma squared times 1. So remember, we simplified 
our mu to be zero, so our y is log normally distributed with a mu equal to zero and variance sigma squared. And we just computed that in this case, the expectation of y equals to e to the power of one half times sigma squared. But uh, we were interested in the general case. We're interested in computing the expectation of y when y is uh, log normally distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared. So we don't want to restrict the mean equals zero. The mean could be anything. So we were interested in computing this integral. Well, we can do this um, by performing a variable transformation. So this term here, in order to simplify it, let's equal that to y. And then if y equals x minus mu, then take the derivative of y with respect to x and you'll just get one. Therefore, dy equals dx, and y is x minus mu. So now we want to express the integral in terms of the new variable. In so instead of x, we want to express everything in the integral in terms of y instead of x. So this is our original integral, and now instead of x, we want to have y, and we just transform the variable, so now our x equals to y plus mu, and y equals x minus mu, so this term here equals to y, and dx equals dy, so dx will be dy. So this is our integral with the transformed variable. So this is our x, this is our x minus mu, and this is our dx. And the limits of the integral do not change because y equals x minus mu. So as x goes to infinity, y equals x minus some constant. So as x goes to infinity, y also goes to infinity. So the upper limit of integration does not change. And as x goes to negative infinity, x minus mu also goes to negative infinity. So that's why we don't need to change the limits of integration here when we transform their variable. Okay, so if you look here, again, this is the addition of exponents and therefore that's multiplication. So that equals to e to the power y times e to the power of mu. And e to the power of mu is just a constant it does not depend on our variable, so we can take it outside of the integral, and we're left with this expression here. But remember, we just derived that this whole integral, well, we had x here, but it doesn't matter what, how we call the variable. I mean, we just derived it in the previous slides that this expression, this is the expectation of y when y is log normally distributed with a mean zero and variance sigma squared, and we derive that the expectation of y in that case equals to e to the power of one half times sigma squared. So therefore, we already know what this whole integral equals. So then our expectation of y for the general case is just e to the power of mu times this integral, and we know this integral equals e to the power of one half times sigma squared. So here we go. This is our expectation of y. y is log, log normally distributed with mean mu variance sigma squared. And this equals to e to the power of mu times e to the power of one half times sigma squared. So this is the proof for the expectation of a log normally distributed random variable.